now I'm standing inside the world's first 3D printed house to receive a building permit. This house was originally built in about 48 hours with Vulcan 1, our first generation printer. Now, the Vulcan 1 was always a kind of a first generation proof of concept technology. My name is Jason Ballard, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Icon. Icon is a construction technology company working in robotics, software, and advanced materials to help lower the cost, increase the speed, and increase the quality of housing. So we just announced this week, now that the Vulcan 2 is ready to go into production and go out into the world, we're gonna break ground on the world's very first 3D printed community in Latin America this summer. From the technology standpoint, we've built a stack of software. And so um, you move through a digital design of a home, you select the home you want to print, and it's sort of as simple as pressing print. So the Vulcan 1 printer could print homes up to about 500 square feet in size. Uh, with Vulcan 2, we're now able to print up to about 2,000 square feet uh, detached, single-family structured. So where we are right now, the, what makes this house notable, it was the first time that any organization in America had successfully pulled a building permit and then 3D printed a house. But it was the first of its kind and we learned a lot and we learned different ways to improve it. You can see the way the printing happens is it prints the house in layers. Uh, and you can see on our first shot, there are a few blemishes included in the wall. And so over the past six months, we've really tackled this problem. Our current printing process, we've reduced the rate of blemishes down to less than 1%. Um, also, you can kind of get a sense of the process here. What happens? is you lay the foundation, you do the site prep very traditionally, then the print comes in and delivers the entire wall system, and then you do fit, finish, like windows, ceiling, um, and then you do mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems, and then you're ready to move in. The print itself, with this house, took about 48 hours with the Vulcan 1. With Vulcan 2, we can do this print in about 24 hours. So the house we're standing in right now is about 350 square feet. We have this common room here. We have uh, an auxiliary room for sitting and reading, perhaps. We have the bedroom. And then right this way is the restroom with the shower. Uh, you can see in here is the only room. People ask us all the time, can you do different treatments and finishes to the wall? And like, indeed, you can. In fact, we've, this is a, a clay finish that's waterproof, which is why we chose it for the bathroom. Our concrete uh, is somewhere kind of between a concrete and a mortar, uh, and we call it lava crete. You have to get uh, the material to do a few interesting things to work in the first instance. You have to get it to flow appropriately through the system, but then immediately once it's extruded or printed, it has to set up uh, and retain shape and then gain strength very, very quickly. And making all that happen is very tough. The compressive strength of lava crete version one that we used on this house was about 3,000 PSI. For comparison, uh, a CMU block has a compressive strength of about 1,500. A Lava Crete version two that we just released uh, not very long ago has a compressive strength of 6,000 PSI. So even twice as strong as that. This material is very, very strong. So strong, in fact, that we've already started to imagine uh, would it be possible for us to begin thinking about multi-story buildings. You can expect us to start printing again like in the next couple of months. And the first community that we'll be printing is down in Latin America with New Story, one of our most important partners. We'll start that project early summer. We've partnered with the Colorado School of Mines and we've been participating in the NASA 3D Printed Habitat Challenge because when you think about perhaps colonizing the rest of the solar system, when we go to Mars, it's not like we're carrying nuts and bolts and screws and lumber. We need a technology that can be operated remotely, they can use local material not to build one kind of building, but all kinds of different buildings as they're needed. So I hope one day some of the first occupied buildings on another planet uh, are 3D printed buildings.
stop by Southwest at LG's Inspiration Gallery, where they're showing off a Keurig-style machine to make ice cream for you. So basically the way it works is you take two capsules that are liquid-based, a flavor, and a kind of ice cream that you want, maybe gelato or frozen yogurt, custard, and you put them into the machine. So if you pop open this lid, you can see we have a space over here for the capsule that has the type of ice cream you want. And over here, you can pop in the capsule for the flavor. Algorithms control the air and the temperature, and it blast freezes ice cream for you in under three minutes. The capsules that have the different types of ice cream have all their ingredients in there already. So it uses also the core technology that we've seen in LG's homebrew, which is a device that brews beer for you at home. So Snow White is still in the research phase, but LG says to expect it on the market in the future. For more coverage from South by Southwest, check back with CNET.com.